Hello Year One! I'm going to read just one chapter to you today because it's a really long one. So, chapter 37 of James and the Giant Peach. And can you remember in the last chapter, the peach got stuck on top of the Empire State Building? <laughs> so, chapter 37. It was really an amazing sight. And in two or three minutes, as soon as the people below realised that this now couldn't possibly a bomb. They came pouring out of the shelters and the subways to gape at the marvel. The streets for half a mile around the building were jammed with men and women and when the word spread that there were actually living things moving about on top of the great round ball, everyone went wild with excitement. It's a flying saucer, they shouted. They are from outer space. They are men from Mars. Or maybe they came from the moon. And a man who had a pair of binoculars to his eye said, They look pretty peculiar to me, I'll tell you that. Police cars and fire engines came screaming in from all over the city and pulled up outside the Empire State Building. Two hundred firemen and six hundred policemen swarmed into the building and went up in the elevators as high as they could go. Then they poured out onto the observation roof, which is the place where tourists stand, just at the bottom of the big spike. All the policemen were holding their guns at the ready with their fingers on the triggers and the firemen were clutching their hatchets. But from where they stood, almost directly underneath the peach, they couldn't actually see the travellers up on top. Ahoy there, shouted the chief of police. Come out and show yourselves. Suddenly, the great brown head of the centipede appeared over the side of the peach. His black eyes, as large and round as two marbles, glared down at the policemen and the firemen below. Then his monstrous, ugly face broke into a wide grin. The policeman and the firemen all started shouting at once. Look out! It's a dragon! It's not a dra dragon, it's a wampus! It's a gordon! It's a sea serpent! It's a proc! It's a manticore! Three firemen and five policemen fainted and had to be carried away. <clears throat> it's a snozwonger! cried the chief of police. It's a wangdoodle, yelled the head of the fire department. The centipede kept on grinning. He seemed to be enjoying enormously the commotion that he was causing. Now see here, shouted the chief of police, cupping his hands to his mouth. You listen to me. I want you to tell me exactly where you've come from. We've come from thousands of miles away, the centipede shouted back grinning more broadly than ever, showing his brown teeth. There you are, called the chief of police. I told you they came from Mars. I guess you're right, said the head of the fire department. At this point, the old green grasshopper poked his huge green head over the side of the peach, alongside the centipedes. Six more big, strong men fainted when they saw him. That one's an oink, screamed the head of the fire department. I just know it's an oink. Or a cockatrice, yelled the chief of police. Stand back, men. It may jump on us any moment. What on earth are they talking about? The old green grasshopper said to the centipede. Search me. But they seem to be in an awful stew about something. Then Miss Spider's large, black, murderous-looking head which to a stranger was probably the most terrifying of all, appeared next to the grasshoppers. <gasps> Snakes and ladders! yelled the head of the fire department. We are finished now! It's a giant scorpula! It's worse than that, cried the chief of police. Oh no, look at its gruesome face! Is that the kind that, get, that eats fully grown men for breakfast? the head of the fire department asked, going white as a sheet. I'm afraid it is, the chief of police answered. 
Oh, please, why doesn't someone help us to get down from here? It's making me giddy, the spider called out. This could be a trick. Don't anyone make a move until I say so. They've probably got space guns, muttered the chief of police. But we've got to do something. About five million people are standing down there on the streets watching us. Let me see. Then why don't you put up a ladder? I'll stand at the bottom and hold it steady for you while you go up and see what's happening. Oh, thanks very much, snapped the head of the fire department. Soon, there were no less than seven large, fantastic faces peering down over the side of the peach. The centipedes, the old green grasshoppers, Miss Spiders, the earthworms, the ladybirds, the silkworms and the glowworms. And a sort of panic was beginning to break out among the firemen and the policemen on the rooftop. Then, all at once, the panic stopped and a great gasp of astonishment went up all around. For now, a small boy was seen to be standing up there beside the other creatures. His hair was blowing in the wind and he was laughing and waving and calling out, Hello everybody! Hello! For a few moments, the men below just stood and stared and gaped. They simply couldn't believe their eyes. Bless my soul! cried the head of the fire department, going red in the face. It really is a little boy, isn't it? Don't be frightened of us, please, James called out. We are so glad to be here. What about those others beside you? shouted the chief of police. Are any of them dangerous? Of course they're not dangerous, James answered. They are the nicest creatures in the world. Allow me to introduce them to you one by one, and then I'm sure you will believe me. My friends, this is the centipede and let me make it known. He is so sweet and gentle that, although he's overgrown, the Queen of Spain, again and again, has summoned him by phone to babysit and sing and knit and be a chaperone when nurse is off and all the royal children are alone. Small wonder, said a fireman, they're no longer on the throne. The earthworm, on the other hand, said James, began, beginning to expand, is great for digging up the land and making old so soils newer. Moreover, you should understand, he would be absolutely grand for digging subway tunnels and for making you a sewer. The earthworm blushed and beamed with pride. Miss Spider clapped and cheered and cried. Could any words be truer? And the grasshopper, ladies and gents, is a boon in millions and millions of ways. You have only to ask him to give you a tune, and he plays and he plays and he plays. As a toy for your children, he's perfectly sweet. There's nothing so good in the shops. You've only got to tickle the soles of his feet, and he hops and he hops and he hops. He can't be very fierce, exclaimed the head of all the cops. And now, without excuse, I'd like to introduce this charming glowworm, lover of simplicity. She's easy to install on your ceiling or your wall. And although this smacks a bit of eccentricity, it's really rather clever, for thereafter you will never, you will never, never, never have the slightest need for using electricity. At which no less than 52 policemen cried, if this is true, that creature will get some fabric fabulous publicity. And here we have Miss Spider with a mile of thread inside her who has personally requested me to say that she's never met Miss Muffet on her charming little tuffet. If she had, she'd not have frightened her away. Should her look sometimes alarm you, then I don't think it would harm you to repeat at least a hundred times a day. I must never kill a spider, 
I must only help and guide her, and invite her in the nursery to play. The policemen all nodded slightly, and the firemen smiled politely, and about a dozen people cried, Hooray! And here's my darling ladybird. So beautiful, so kind, my greatest comfort since this trip began. She has 400 children and she's left them all behind. But they're coming on the next peach of the can. The cops cried, she's entrancing. All the firemen started dancing and the crowds all started cheering to a man. And now the silkworm, James went on. Whose silk will bear comparison with all the greatest silks there are in Rome and Philadelphia. If you would search the whole world through, from Parago to Timbuktu, I don't think you would find one bit of silk that could compare with it. Even the shops in Singapore don't have the stuff. And what is more, this silkworm had, I'll have you know, the honour not, not so long ago, to spin and weave and sew and press the Queen of England's wedding dress. And she's already made and sent a waistcoat for your president. Well, good for her, the cops cried out. And all at once a mighty shout went up around the Empire State. Let's get them down at once. Why wait? And that's the end of chapter 37. So we've got one, two, two chapters left of our book. So we'll finish our story tomorrow. See you later.